The following program is sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're looking at insulation for new home construction. We'll begin with our insulation specialist, Gary Rockweiler from Rockweiler Insulation, who will explain how homeowners have many options and upgrades when it comes to insulating their new home. Next, we'll learn more about the new blown in blanket system that looks great, performs better, and even helps with the reduction of outside noise. And we'll finish up seeing how a professionally designed insulation system handles air sealing around penetrations to the outside of and within a home. So we have a lot to cover today and we'll get started after these messages. Insulation, there are so many choices. What's right for you? The energy professionals at Rockweiler Insulation can help by providing an energy analysis of your home and a recommendation on the right type of insulation. Proper insulation will reduce excess noise, help maintain a comfortable temperature, and reduce your energy costs. Don't settle for less. Contact Rockweiler Insulation at 845-7625. What you don't see makes all the difference. When building a new home, many homeowners get caught up in the glamour aspect and concentrate solely on the visual amenities. Not that these aren't important, they are, but one very important component that sometimes gets overlooked is the insulation system. And it's the one area that provides a payback and is responsible for creating and maintaining a comfortable living environment. And to me, that's the most important feature of all. So on today's show, we'll follow along with our experienced insulation contractor, Gary Rockweiler, who will explain how he designs an insulation system and how an educated consumer will understand their options and ultimately get their best value. Oh, Gary, this is a beautiful home. What a gorgeous setting out on a golf course. Oh, certainly. Now, your role as the insulation contractor started long before this stage, right? Oh yeah, we, uh, we got involved when the plan was issued and when the homeowner decided what they wanted and then so we tried our best to fit the specs that would work best in this home, in this circumstance, in the climate and in their comfort level. Well obviously on today's show we want to walk through different insulation choices, really insulation systems for new home construction. How does the consumer fit into that role as far as you're concerned as an insulation contractor? Actually, uh, in recent times, more than it used to be. It used to be the general contractor or the, whoever was engineering the job took care of that, but homeowners now are much more aware. They're better studied. They're taking a more active role, which I like, that I can have more interaction with the homeowner. Uh, the more involved they are, the more research they've done, the better product they're going to wind up getting. It's really ho homeowner research that helps drive a better quality job at the end. So, in your opinion, it's a good idea for the homeowner building the home to actually talk to their insulation contractor? Oh, certainly not. Certainly not supersede the things that the builder would be doing if a builder was involved. But an active role, yeah, you would want to do that. You do it for health issues, and this is a pretty large investment, so you should do it in your home, too. Well, you know, we've done enough shows together, and I always marvel at the different insulation choices, how the, con the industry continues to evolve. I mean, way back when, it just seemed like it was bats, but now it's a lot more than that. Sure, there have been uh, technology evolutions that have gone on over the, over the years and all for the better. The research brings out better products, better products. We're trying to stay up with that. So yeah, the bats are still here and they're used sometimes exclusively in a building, but if the homeowner chooses and wants to go to the upgrades, go beyond the basic, we do have products that will accommodate that and get a, hopefully a better result at the end. Well, what do you say we head downstairs and kind of take it from the ground up and see what insulation choices were recommended in this home? All right. Okay, Stuart, now we're down in the lower level. We are under the main garage. Uh, this has a spancrete ceiling here, the floor of the garage, and this will be a finished theater room uh, when it's all wrapped up. So. Boy, what a great use of space of a lower level. I bet not too many homeowners think of using the space under their garage floor. Obviously, it's poured above, but uh, a little foresight can go a long way, and it's going to be a very usable room. Now, is this a poured wall right here? Yeah, that's poured concrete wall, and inside that, they've put styrofoam. The styrofoam is here to be a drying agent so that the finished wall system can stay dry. And because that 
concrete wall will be an eternal wick, this really makes a huge difference. This keeps that moisture at bay so that if you want to insulate this, and in this case they would because it's a theater room and it's going to help keep sound control at bay, it'll also add some thermal value, but even if they didn't insulate it, it would be a dry wall because this drying agent is in place. Well, you know, this has been the age-old question for, for, geez, for a number of years, all the years we've been doing shows together. How do you insulate a basement wall? And is, are you seeing very many people doing it this way? Is this really becoming the norm? Um, probably not to say it's the norm yet, but hopefully it will be. It's a procedure that's been out there now for some time, and those of us that know it, like it, have seen it work and seen the end result. We expound its virtues, so we're hoping it's going to be out there more than it is now. So in all years of experience, when you walk into a basement, can you tell the difference? I can, yeah. After a number of years of being around these damp basements, when you walk into a basement at this stage of the game, when it should be traditionally pretty wet and damp down here, yeah, it's still going to be some wet and damp, but not near as it would be if the styrofoam, the drying agent, were not here. Well, you know, that's the advantage of using an experienced contractor, I mean, keep that line of communication open and they're going to open your eyes to a whole new world to end up getting a better end result. Hopefully. Let's go over here to a knee wall. It's a little more traditional situation. All right. Well, here we are, Stuart, in another part of the lower level in the basement. Same as kind of in the theater room. This is a uh, called a furred wall, a frame wall inside concrete. And this one, as in there, has that one inch of polystyrene, the styrofoam between the uh, poured wall and the frame wall. So that's an R5, this is an R11 bat, so this wall system has an R16 in it. And in this case there would not be a poly bearer on the front side of this because that's what the state has mandated. We don't want to have any moisture trapping but with a uh, plastic sheathing on the inside of this wall. Sure, and again, that's because there's a poured concrete wall behind it. Exactly. Okay, now, whether it's a poured concrete wall behind it or it's a stud wall exposed to the outside, what are the advantages to bad insulation? Well, this product has been around for a long, long time, 60, 70 years in this form, and in this particular circumstance, it's the easiest to work with, to cut, to fit, to patch. There are other products on the market, but in this one circumstance with the concrete wall behind it, this would be the best application with this product. And I know in years past when we've been together demonstrating the installation techniques, it's not just putting the bats in. I mean, they want to be professionally installed, right? Certainly. We want to try to cut it to fit as closely as we can to the perimeter of the opening. And in, uh, in this case, we've, we've got the luxury of an air gap between the styrofoam and this bat. So if the bat's not fully flush to the front of the stud in this circumstance, it's not that big of an issue because there's air behind it. But yeah, we want to have it you know, filled out to the corners. Well, there's no substitute for experience, that's for sure, even in the installation of insulation. Now, another area down here in the basement I know is where the box sells. Did you go with that spray foam insulation? Right, that's a two-part component uh, closed cell spray foam. And the reason that we put that there, uh, the box cell area of the home is usually the weakest link in the wall system. It's got the concrete right below it. It's got the subflooring above it. It's going to be isolated with usually a, a ceiling covering from here, the subfloor above it. If there's going to be air infiltration and or moisture infiltration, it would occur there. The closed cell foam really seals all that off, keeps it dry, keeps it about as tight as you can get it. It definitely is more expensive, but that's one area it's hard to go back and fix later. You, you need to do that now if you want to do that. So really, even in uh, different systems of insulation that are available, there's good, better, best, would you say? Certainly. That's a good way to define it. And in that circumstance, that is best. Well, if I'm building a home, that certainly makes sense to me because if, if it's a known weak link, why not do it right? And if you're going to live in your home, you want to be comfortable. Exactly. Stick around. We'll learn more about the new blown in blanket system next when we continue with today's Home Remodeler. Insulation. There are so many choices. What's right for you? The energy professionals at Rockweiler Insulation can help by providing an energy analysis of your home and a recommendation on the right type of insulation. Proper insulation will reduce excess noise, help maintain a comfortable temperature, and reduce your energy costs. Don't settle for less. Contact Rockweiler Insulation at 845-7625. What you don't see makes all the difference. In our last segment, we learned that a consumer has many options when it comes to selecting insulation for their home. And how by doing your homework and communicating with your insulation contractor, you'll get the best insulation products for your situation. One product upgrade that looks great and performs even better is the new blowing in blanket system. So now let's continue with our insulation specialist, Gary Rockweiler from Rockweiler Insulation, who explains more about this insulation option. 
Now Gary, as you were laying out the insulation system during the design phase for this home, were there some challenging areas? Yeah, it usually is in every building, and this room uh, in particular has a tray ceiling in it, and we will be blowing in R50 in this ceiling. However, right here where the tray system drops down, it makes kind of a lower isolated area that we don't know that we could get 100% of the R50 right down tight to the drywall like we'd like to see it completed product. So what my guys did was they batted this first. They put an R19 bat here, a layer of R19, so that when they blow over, we know we're going to have a thermal guard right down tight to the drywall in that, that tight area. Almost a safety net. There you go. It's just, just that. And I guess, again, an experienced contractor understands these areas, just looks at the plan and doesn't say, oh, we'll just blow it, don't worry about it. So you're really looking at all aspects when you're reviewing a set of plans? Certainly, and, and we sure wouldn't want to have to come back and try to fix something in this area. The homeowner doesn't need that disruption. We don't need the the call back and this is one way to prevent that. Well, you know, downstairs we talked about uh, the bat insulation and you can opt to go with bats throughout the house, but in this home they opted for this Optima system. I just love the look of it. It's so neat and clean. This is one of the upgrades and this is one of the things we mentioned earlier with technology that's now available and if the homeowner has done research and, and would like to move to this upgrade, it is a really neat system. It works well. Well, you know, I saw Gilbert over there installing something. Let's go talk more about it as we see him install the wall behind Let's us. Let's do it. Boy, Gary, I just love seeing the wall cavity be filled up with this bib system. It looks like it does a really good job of sealing up around there, really filling the cavity. Oh, definitely, definitely. And it does fill all the cavity. The, the entire cavity will be filled behind the light boxes, behind wires. Anything that's an open area inside the cavity will be filled. Okay, now so where is this hose going? Do you have a truck outside that you're filling a big hopper? Yeah, that's exactly right. The same machine uh, that we essentially would use to blow in attics, we just blow this product to it to go into the into the wall. It's just a truck mounted power takeoff machine. It's fun to watch it installed, isn't it? It sure is. I mean, to me, again, the, the look of it is nice, but from a performance standpoint, what are the homeowners going to notice with a system like this? Well, first off, in a five and a half inch two by six wall cavity, it yields a higher R value. Traditional bat insulation is R19. You can get an R21 bat, but this, when it's a filled cavity, yields an R23. Oh, no kidding. So again, R value, that's how you measure the efficiency. That means to the consumer, hopefully lower utility bills? Sir, and not only in the heating season, but of course in the air conditioning season too, because we're keeping the condition space isolated from outside elements. What type of uh, fill is it? Is it fiberglass? That's a, a shortcut fiberglass blowing wall made by certain teeth corporation. It's called Optima. And it's similar to the blowing wall we put into the attic, although this is a little different. The grains of this fiber are cut considerably shorter, and the reason for that is so that the, the, when the fibers are packed into that wall cavity, they'll become more dense by with a shorter fiber, and we yield a better R value. So when you say they can be packed in, I mean, look at that, you can really compress that down, but it doesn't look like it's being this much compressed. No, no, we wouldn't compress it quite to that degree. So how how tight do you want it to be? I mean, how, I mean, when I walked by, there's great consistency. Obviously, that's a testament to the experienced professional Gilbert there installing it. But is there a certain level you want to be at? Yeah, certainly. A five and a half inch cavity is going to yield R23. And the way we'll know that that's consistent is that these guys, after they do portions of the house, they will do random testing. They will take a device we have that they can plug into the wall, and that device will pull out one cubic foot of this product. Then they weigh it on a digital postal scale, and it has to weigh a minimum of 1.8 pounds per cubic foot. And they, they'll, they'll note on the walls, they'll document the testing, who did it, what date, how much the weight was, so that when the building inspector, builder, homeowner, whomever wants to see the performance can find out what we accomplished. Uh, do you find that the building inspectors like this product as well and like to see you guys testing it? Yeah, I, I've not seen any negatives uh, about it, and certainly the homeowner feedback has been good in, in terms of the thermal value of it, but also in the sound control that folks have told us that it seems like to get lesser outside noises coming into the home when you have this high density product in the, in the outside wall cavity. So again, to me, the, the whole theme here is talk to your insulation professional you know, make sure you're getting the right products and be aware of the different upgrades in the insulation systems that are up there. You think about adding granite countertops and a nice front entry and all these different amenities to the house, but a lot of times people have a tendency to over overlook the little things like insulation that ultimately is going to dictate the comfort and after all you want to have a comfortable home. Oh sure and it's back to what I said earlier this goes back to homeowner research if, if you're someone who doesn't mind looking into the products going into what will probably be your biggest investment in your life why not take that time know what's out there so you can ask the question so if your builder doesn't offer this or if you're doing it yourself you don't know it exists well you won't know if you don't do the research so find that out from a professional or do your own research and know the products available. Bottom line educated consumer gets their best value. 
Stay tuned, we'll look at the air sealing aspect next. Insulation, there are so many choices. What's right for you? The energy professionals at Rockweiler Insulation can help by providing an energy analysis of your home and a recommendation on the right type of insulation. Proper insulation will reduce excess noise, help maintain a comfortable temperature, and reduce your energy costs. Don't settle for less. Contact Rockweiler Insulation at 845-7625. What you don't see makes all the difference. So far in today's show, we've seen how to properly insulate a concrete wall, discussed where to use fiberglass bats, and learned the virtues of the new blown-in blanket system. Now let's finish up today's show with our insulation contractor, Gary Rockweiler, who discusses the importance of air sealing in new home construction. You know, another interesting aspect I noticed in this home is there's a lot of insulation between the interior walls. Yeah, this is an R11 sound bath. This uh, another one of the upgrades the homeowner chose to go with, and this works well in terms of keeping some noise spillover from a very active part of the house or an active room into an inactive room, and it works pretty well. Yeah, it makes sense to me, and you know, we talked about the scenarios of good, better, best. It might not apply in those terms to the good, better, best of the quality of the insulation between the walls, but it always comes back to creature comfort. I know it's a term you like to use, and you're building a home, you want it to be comfortable. And you only get one time to do this when the wall is open. Well, you know, there's bad insulation we talked about. We talked about the bib system, but Developing an insulation system goes beyond just fiberglass in the walls. Oh yes, right now uh, this wall has the fiberglass in it, it has the mesh that holds that fiberglass in, but that's not the final product. The final product here is going to be the formal vapor barrier we put over the wall. It's already installed on most of the ceiling, and this will be applied to all the exterior walls. And the purpose of this is to keep the moisture from the inside of the house, which we're in a moist climate here in Wisconsin. This will keep the moisture from getting into the wall cavity. So it's very important that our guys make sure if there's any holes, rips, tears, punctures, that they either tape that or they put a patch over that. So when the drywall is applied, we've got a complete cover of the plastic on the walls and the ceiling. So again, it seems like you need a good quality visqueen, but more importantly, you need good quality installation. Yeah, well that's why the inspector comes behind us to make sure that we're doing our, our job correctly too. So there's more than just our sets of eyes to see that it's done properly. And again, it's to keep moisture from getting from the inside into the walls because moisture is the enemy of wood and, and insulation. Exactly, dry is better. Okay, what about ceiling? And I'm not talking about the ceiling, I'm talking about the air ceiling that goes on. Is that a pretty important aspect? It sure is. And we've got a place uh, back in the bathrooms where maybe we can see how that's been uh, worked out very well. Stuart, these are the areas I was referring to out there where we do the ceiling. This is a two-part component foam, and uh, my guys have put that around wherever we have an opportunity for air to enter the heated envelope here, whether it be the ceiling, whether it be outside wall penetrations, and as you can see here, uh, we do it even on the interior walls where we think there's going to be a reason to knock down a draft. And this will be a bathroom with a lot of hard surface in it, and if there's draft on that hard surface, it feels even colder. So that was the original reason we would do this. Now. Uh, inspectors want us to do this because there should ever be a smoke or fire problem. It minimizes the chimney effect and the draft moving through the interior of the house. Sure, you're, you're ridding the home of any conduit that could cause further exactly. damage. Exactly. So you're talking about sealing up the exterior and interior wall penetrations. Penetrations being obviously plumbing and electrical wires, but oh, windows and doors. Well, windows and doors, same thing. We put a light layer of bead of foam around the outside to do the air sealing, and then we put the fiberglass chinking in the inside of that. So what we've done the same thing there. We're making, trying to make sure that we have no air leak, no air penetrations coming in from around the windows and door openings. And again, that's the role of the insulation contractor, not the role of the person installing it. You want to make sure that, right, that's that it's sealed up. Mm -hmm. Now moving upward, there's ceiling penetrations, recessed cans, ceiling fans, outlets. What do you do in situations like that? Well, before the guys put the ceiling plastic up, they went to all the overhead light fixtures, the, the boxes that are up there, and they took the foam, same foam applied here, and they foamed where the wires enter into the top of those fixtures and the top of the fixtures of foam. So we reduced the penetration effect there. The recessed cans, uh, nowadays they have what's called a, a draft-proof can. It's not quite draft-proof, but we address that as we go along too to try to tighten those up. And then we put the ceiling plastic up, put our air chutes and our soffit blocks at the edge so we keep our ventilation in place. And then when the drywall is up in this house, we're gonna put R50 blown fiberglass up there. Now R50, that sounds like a lot of insulation going in there. Well it is, uh, state code in Wisconsin right now and the ceiling is R38. But again, this is a homeowner who can see the value down the road of these upgrades. 
And that's certainly a big payback, putting that insulation up there. So we're going to blow in the Certainty Dental Safe SP, the new product up here, and um, I think that'll be a darn good result for this homeowner. One thing for sure, it's going to be a very comfortable home. And throughout today's show, you know, comfort keeps coming up. You want to create it, and how do you do it? You have the right insulation system, and it seems as though there's choices out there for the homeowner because the code is really the bare minimum. Yeah, the code is the minimum and you can work from that. Unfortunately, quite often in our industry, it's a very uh, economy driven or economics driven. And so people don't want to think beyond that. But if you're the homeowner and you want to be here for 20 years or more, then maybe it's in your best interest to see what's out there and see percentage wise what that minimal investment can get for return on you. I mean, the stock market might give you a payback. Insulation will give you a payback. And there's not too many things in this world that are guaranteed, but I know that's one of them. Gary, as usual, it's been very enjoyable and educational having you on. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Now here are some key points to help summarize today's show. If you're building new or remodeling your existing home, don't take the insulation system for granted. There are many insulating products, and an educated consumer who understands their options will get their best value and the most comfortable home. Be sure to work with an experienced professional contractor who will incorporate the latest technology such as the blowing in blanket system we saw on today's show. And keep in mind, insulation is the one area in a home that's virtually guaranteed to provide a payback. So be an educated consumer, spend a little more on your insulation, and enjoy your comfortable new home for years to come. Well, we're all out of time for this week's show. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on Today's Home Remodeler.